Hey viewers, it's been about five years since I built this gravel bike. I made a whole series of videos on that build, so go check those out. But it's time for an update. When I built this bike, I built it with cyclocross wheels and tires, but I want fatter tires now. So I'm gonna go ahead and convert it from these 700C wheels over to these heavier duty 29er wheels. The rims are wider and I'll be able to fit much wider tires on there. Uh, one thing is the hub spacing on this is 135 millimeter, but the frame is spaced to be 130 millimeter. So I'm gonna have to re-space the rear triangle here to fit the wider wheel. I'll also do some brake, uh, brake adjustments to, to, uh, for these wider rims. So when I'm done with this, the bike's gonna be even more fun to ride than it is now. So stay tuned for that. Now while I got you here, there's no time like the present to hit that subscribe button so you see future videos. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Well, got to start somewhere, so let's start off by pulling the, the uh, original wheels off. And I'm going to remove this derailleur here, just get it out of the way for while I'm re-spacing the, uh, the triangle here. So before I spread the rear triangle here, I'll get a base measurement and that's about 130 millimeters. That'll be my starting point. I want to spread it out to 135 millimeters. So that's just two and a half millimeters on each side I'll be spreading out. Now to spread the, the uh, rear triangle, I'm going to use a uh, process called cold setting, in which case I'm going to spread the, the rear triangle out well past the 135 uh, millimeter mark then relax the uh, pressure on there to see where it settles out. If it's still not at 135, I'll go out a little bit farther. And I just keep going out a little farther each time. I have a uh, threaded rod with some nuts and some washers on here. And so I'm just going to tighten this uh, nut over here so it's just going to push out. And even though I don't need to tighten both of them, uh, I, I just need to tighten one because of Newton's second law. Uh, it's going to push out both ways. So I got a ratcheting wrench here and I'll just start tightening it out and then I'll get some measurements along the way before I release it. Okay, so I'm about 150 millimeters, which I'm sure is nowhere near enough, but I'll go ahead and relax it and get a measurement. Okay, so that's like at about 132 millimeters. So I still need to go a little bit farther. So maybe I'll take it up to like 155. And whenever you do something like this, you do it at your own risk. It's possible to damage the frame, but this is not that uncommon of a procedure. But still, there is risk involved. Okay, so I'm out at about 155 right now. I'm out actually at the limit of my tool here. So I have to get a uh, little ruler but I'll go ahead and release the uh, pressure here. I'm at about 134 and a half millimeters and that actually might be close enough. I can try test fitting the wheel. Okay. Okay, it fits in there. It's just a tiny bit snug. I have to kind of pull it out just a tiny little bit to get the wheel in there, but that's no big deal. So I think that'll work just fine as is. Okay, so now I want to check the alignment of the dropouts. They should be parallel, but as uh, you spread the uh, rear triangle out, the dropouts tend to uh, get just a little bit out of alignment. And so I have my park tool alignment gauge here to check the alignment. Now, if you look at the little gap in there, you can see that they're very slightly out of parallel. And so now I can use these tools to kind of straighten the dropouts just a little bit and bring them into parallel. I mean, they don't need to be exactly perfect, but the, the better they are, uh, they're the less stress on the axle. If they're way out of alignment, it can put stress on the axle and you can bend and break axles. But this is just a little bit off. And so that looks way better there. Okay, so now I want to check the alignment of the derailleur hanger here. It should be parallel to the plane of the wheel. And so I have my park tool uh, derailleur uh, hanger alignment gauge here. And it's screwed into the hanger there. And so this, this little rod here comes out. And I'm going to bring it out so it just touches the edge of the rim there. 
And since the wheel may not be in perfectly true, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust it always to where the valve hole hit is here. So if I bring it around back down here, and I can already see that it's out of alignment here. It should be uh, the same distance from the rim all the way around, but here there's a big gap. So what I need to do is bring this over here and I'm gonna use the tool to kind of bend the hanger a little bit this way. Oh, just a little bit. Okay, and then do it again here. So, so now after making numerous just small adjustments all the way around, I, I get this here just touching the rim there by where the valve hole is. I go around down here. It's pretty close down there. Go the way down to the bottom and it's very close down there. I go away all over, over here and it's pretty close over there. So it's pretty, mu uh, pretty much the same distance from the rim all the way around. So that means the hanger is parallel to the plane of the wheel now. So that is aligned. Now I'm ready to reinstall the rear derailleur. So go ahead and get this cable on here like that. And then get this on here like this. Like that. So now I want to remove the cassette from the old wheel. So now I want to install the cassette onto the new wheel here. So get everything all lined up here. Spacer. Get this next cog on here. Like that. That. And then uh, tighten it down to uh, 40 Newton meters with a torque wrench. Like that. Okay, now to install the wheel, put the chain on the first cog, bring it up into place. And then lock it into place there. Okay, now to check the shifting here. Up, 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 down, 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 down. That actually looks pretty good. Okay, I mounted the front wheel on here. Now, if you notice here, I can't even attach this cable here. That's because these brakes were adjusted for a thinner rim. So now that this fatter rim is on there, they just won't close enough for me to attach this cable. So I need to adjust these brakes for this wider rim. So I'm going to do that by uh, loosening this out and letting this cable out just a little bit. And then see how these work here. A little bit better, but I, I did a little too much cable there. Okay, so I got the cable adjusted. Now I have nice movement on the front brakes here. Uh, I'm gonna come back after I get the tires mounted and readjust the brake pads. But in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and readjust the cable on the rear brakes as well. Okay, I adjusted the cable on these the same way as I did the front brakes and I have good movement on these as well.
Okay, so now I'm ready to install the tires. Uh, the tires I got here are these Schwalbe Hurricanes. They're 29 by 2.0. And I know that the people, somebody's going to ask me about the, the tread on these tires. Uh, it's smooth in the middle and there's knobbies on the side. I'm setting this bike up for a particular uh, race. Uh, it's a Black Bike Challenge mountain bike race. It's 40 miles and about a third of it is on asphalt. And the other two thirds are like on a dirt road. Uh, so it's a gravel grinder. There is a little bit of single track in there, but I think these tires will be a good fit for that race. So what, um, what I want to do is first locate the uh, the bow hole on the rim, so that it's right there. And so I want to have the logo of the tire lined up with that. The reason being, so um, if you get like a flat tire, you put, pull the tube out, you can locate the hole in the tube. That way you can correlate it to where it was on the tire and look for something uh, in the tire, like a nail or something in there. And this is also a directional tire. So the arrow pointing this way. So I want to have have it like this. So I'm going to go ahead and just get this onto the rim like that. And then I got a, a tube for it. I want to go ahead and put like a little bit of air in the tube to start off with. And that's enough. And then get the valve stem down through here like this and start getting the tube inserted into the tire. And then start getting the bead of the tire all seated into place. And then just use one of my little uh, Pedro's tire levers to kind of help get it on like that. And then go ahead and add some air. Make sure you're not pinching the tube anywhere. And one tire done. Just do I have, just have to do the other one. Okay, so I've got the tires mounted on the wheels, and I got the wheels mounted on the bikes. Now I want to adjust the brake pads. To help me do that. I'm gonna use a rubber band and use this to compress the brake lever, so it'll compress the brakes while I adjust the pads. Okay, now the pad is riding a little bit low on the rim there. So what I'm gonna do is just loosen this up, and I can just move it up into place here and get it kind of centered on the rim. Up close to the tire, but I don't want to have it touching the tire. And then when I get it in position, just go ahead and tighten it into place. And just like that. And then we'll do the other three just like that. Well, I'm finished. And man, this thing looks like it's going to be a blast. I'm going to go take it out for a test ride. Or maybe I'll wait till some warmer weather. A nice sunny day, blasting down the trails. This thing looks like a beast. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please give my video a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe, click that bell so you get notified when I come out with new videos. Join me over at Facebook. Like that page, I, I spend a lot of time over there. And I have a webpage, rjthebikeguy.com. Go check that out as well. Thank you very much for watching.